and welcome back to all my dear students and friends i am ravinshu sharma assistant professor in department of journalism and mass communication of babu banarsi das university lucknow in my last video i have discussed with you about the internet radio i have discussed about the advantages of internet i have discussed about the disadvantages of internet how you can set up a internet radio or if you are planning to set up an internet radio uh, what are, what is the budget that you need to require for that what are the equipments that you need to have or uh, how you can broadcast how you can broadcast it to through internet what are the things that you have to keep in mind how to set up a server and few more things related that i hope you must have got a lot of new insights new inputs about uh, the internet radio and uh, if you are planning for internet radio then you will definitely you can go for that so in this video second video of this module 2 i'll discuss with you about the ham radio yeah it's ham it's h a m ham radio this ham radio is also known as amateur radio so what is this amateur radio what is this ham radio uh, why we use ham radio what are the things that we have to keep in mind if you are planning as a ham radio uh, what are the requirement that you need to have what are the licenses or how was the training so we will be discussing about th things about this ham radio so let's get started with this Uh, ham radio it's a type of radio under the various types of radio it's not a it's simple radio it's a unique one radio how it is unique and how it's not uh, equal to the tra traditional radio and how it does it work on which frequency so we will be discussing a lot quite more interesting things uh, about this ham radio so let's get started with this video so uh, the content that we will be discussing with this uh, th uh, thing is that is uh, the origin of this word uh, how this word h a m this is started uh, in the uh, this radio context ham about the uh, licenses uh, about the license exam about the ham radio station types we will also be discussing about the modes of communication in this ham radio and its application and the quite few more things interesting things about the ham radio so let's get started with this ham radio uh, <clears throat> the origin of the word ham that is h a m so the origin of this word has came from the name of the three scientists actually the three scientists uh, while i was discussing about the uh, history of the radio i have uh, taken the one name of the scientist that is guglielmo marconi so he is one of the scientists in this ham radio so uh, in this ham radio the three main scientists that were the first scientist name is hendrich hertz the second scientist is major um, strong and the third scientist is guglielmo guglielmo marconi so these are the three scientists who were involved in ham radio so the concept of the ham these are the three letters h a and m these are the letters taken from the names of those three scientists uh, to make this name of the uh, radio they have given the name of the radio from the initial of the, their names to form a name so its uh, first scientist is hendrich hertz so the h letter this letter h is taken from the hertz that is that is h e r t s they have taken h from the hertz hendrich hertz the second scientist was major armstrong so the letter a is taken from the word armstrong a letter the third scientist was guglielmo marconi guglielmo guglielmo marconi so to marconi m letter is taken from the marconi so the hertz h armstrong a and the marconi m so these three letters of the scientist name and they have given the name from their name symbol resemblance that is uh, ham h a m ham so that one can easily identify about the names of the scientists who were associated who have done this research behind this uh, ham radio and given a very wonderful innovation in front of all of us so this was the origin of the ham word so introduction to the ham radio let's get uh, introduce with the ham radio what is ham radio uh, this ham radio is a community of people who use radio transist transmitters and receives to communicate with others 
ham radio operators okay so you have to be like ham ham both uh, receiver and the transmitter both have to be ham the this ham radio is a community uh, of people a uh, community radio station is different thing from uh, this ham radio uh, in that also there is a community in which uh, the rg or the production team they deliver the content towards the community but here the community of the two people both use the radio transmitters and the receivers to communicate with each other while in the community radio station the receivers the have to use only the receiver they don't have to use the that radio transmitter and the other things both they have to just use the simple radio just to act get the uh, signals and the here in the ham radio the uh, the, the connection that is in the real time it's a type of two way communication or you can say it's a live communication two people can do and talk to each other so ham radio they use radio transmitters as well as receivers to communicate with the other ham radio operators see this radio ham is also known as amateur radio okay so basically what happens uh, is this ham radio is also used in the uh, crucial times of the war or the earthquake uh, when it like uh, the signals the, the tower of the all the city gets destroyed due to earthquake or due to flood or due to any war like situation so there is no option of the communication in that case ham radio is the best form of communication one can easily communicate with the with ham radio the works on the different frequencies not the frequency that works on the phone calls it works on the different frequencies so that's why ham radios are working in the earthquake or the earth, or the earthquake or the floods things like on during the war also this can be used ham radio licensing exam if we talk about the exam one cannot easily work as a ham radio operator the government tries to ensure that the person who is going to be a ham radio hobbyist is technically competent because there are few things you need to know how to operate those things it's not easy like the radio or the cell phones that we are using right now or, or the in the few years back so there are few technicalities that you need to know about the frequency the wavelengths that they need to set so so government tries to ensure that everyone who every person who so ever is using the ham he should be technically sound second he she should not interfere with other professional two way wireless communication services if you talk about the aeronautical if you talk about the maritime if you talk about the police military uh, for the army uh, people who with the i have discussed about the army people also the use so uh, one should make sure that he should not all or you should not interfere into the frequency of these paramedical periphery paramilitary people who are working in this uh, thing so uh, you should not be uh, into these things you have to if you are using ham uh, calling then the receiver should be the, you know, the other part he should the communication between both the two people should be there in a proper secure way the third thing is prevent misuse of wireless chat many time it happens uh, people when they get the learning of the uh, of the license uh, about the radio ham radio if you don't don't get the learning of the license uh, this uh, ham radio they play started playing with the ham radio just like a play game of a child is started playing so make sure that you should not misuse this device rather than you should make it up of a profitable use coming to the radio ham radio station types there are four types of radio stations generally ham radio station type the first radio station type is handheld trans receivers that in short you can say ht handheld trans receiver it's a small light portable but not much power some can fit in your pocket using repeaters they can be quite useful and you can go on like uh, go on your hike easily in anywhere so it's like a handheld transceiver you can use it anywhere you can even you can uh, some you can put in your pocket and you can move anywhere and sometimes you can use repeaters also to work on this handheld transceivers second uh, radio station type is base station trans receiver base station trans receiver a uh, permanent station in a building uh, like you can say it's at your place uh, a commercial place or at some office place like so more power is there if you using alternate currents to do this and easier to use 
and uh, if it's obviously it's a, if it's a base station then it will be having a lot of more features because you are there in a particular place and don't have to go anywhere you cannot keep that radio in your pocket so you can expand uh, you don't have to work you don't have to think about the, its portability so it can be some difficult like a uh, like complex type of structure and you can have more and more features third the radio station type is uh, mobile trans receivers a uh, permanent station while as uh, permanent station in a vehicle uh, more power then that the HT antenna doesn't work well inside the metal car. If you talk about the handheld trans receiver, which is small, light, portable, you can keep pocket. So that type of trans receivers, they're not able to work inside the metal car. It's uh, like you can say, uh, nowadays you must have seen the OB vans, that's it. That is outdoor broadcasting van. Somewhere it's like, uh, it's uh, like a vehicle and inside the vehicle, this uh, permanent station, like kind of that. Uh, so it's a kind of OB van and mobile trans receiver receivers are there you can move when you to a particular place and you can get in touch with the people's uh, for your work as per your need uh, coming to the fourth type of registration that is repeaters repeaters like uh, it's uh, they are highly located on the located on the high points if you talk about the mountains if you talk about the tall buildings uh, if you talk about the satellites to automatically relay signals so these are located on high points to automatically relay the signals. That's why repeaters are used in this uh, radio station type. Some have connections to the telephone systems and some have connections to the internet also so that you can uh, work as per your need, require, demand. So, so coming to the first uh, one type of radio station that is handheld trans receiver. Uh, that is HT. So these are the few three key points uh, about the HT. That is the first one is bands. Uh, if you talk about if we talk about the bands, bands uh, are VHF and UHF. Uh, VHF is a very high frequency and UHF is ultra high frequency. Uh, coming to the power, if you talk about the power of this uh, radio station HT, they have up to five watt of power they consume. Uh, if we talk about the range, the range is 1 to 5 miles without a repeater, like without uh, much, uh, without more with repeater. So this is the uh, range of the HT trans receivers, that is H the handheld trans receiver. Coming to the base station, base station is somewhat like uh, the like place of uh, of your office or like that, is, that cannot be moved, unmoved place, fixed place. This is uh, operational at a fixed location, usually at your home, like you can also set up a base station at your home also. If you talk about the trans receiver, they are the ability to operate while in the motion, uh, mobile trans receiver uh, like uh, it's here like uh, if you're moving on a cycle then you are moving from one place to another i have given an example of the ob van like uh, that van is also moving and uh, the inside that the system uh, is everything is there so they have the mobility mobile transceivers it's the ability to operate while in the motion for example you can see is a person riding on a cycle and cycle they have his bag in the back side and inside that bag the entire setup this is the setup with this walkie talkie that so for the communications for the two-way communication they have used these two things so it's a ham radio they have they can use anywhere and by keeping inside that part coming to the fourth one that is a repeater so in this repeater you have you can see there's a small diagram or side diagram has a repeater it has a mobile at the back side of the mobile diagram some houses are there and the bottom right side there's a person portably is talking to the base people and there's a base station like bottom left side you can see it's a base so repeaters uh, the main repeater word is here so repeater help extend the range of VHF that is very high frequency and UHF that is ultra high frequency handheld and mobile transceiver so they repeat as also device uh, that you use at the end of a home whatever places to boost the speed of the internet so basically if you are sitting on the another room in the another room and your wi-fi router is in the drawing room so you use uh, that repeater to boost this uh, signals of the speed of the your broadband modem so this that repeater and this repeater is somewhat like uh, they same 
so they also here we also they help in the increasing the range of the vhf and the uhf handheld and the mobile trans receiver so this is the helpful in that case if you talk about the repeater frequency so uh, they receive they receive uh, one frequency and transmit the another frequency and the another frequency when that they transmit that is the boosted one and the frequency which they receive that is uh, the simple uh, frequency what uh, the from what what he is get what, what the device is getting from the from around secondly usually in the vhf and the uhf that is very high frequency and ultra high frequency bands uh, in there so third point it allows much longer range for small radios they allow much longer for the small radios uh, located uh, somewhere in the building or somewhere at the height on the mountains or the you know, building so as you can see the output is uh, 146 megahertz and the input uh, is 146.07 megahertz both the having a same input and output just that is because due to the repeater signals uh, are uh, the blue line that is going top to the repeater that the signals are going top that is 146.07 megahertz input is going that is in blue line to the repeater and the output uh, that is coming and you can see there is a red line coming towards downside and you can see here is 146.67 megahertz so you can compare the input and the output uh, the difference between the input and the output is uh, 0 0.60 so because you can see the, it's the signals are boosted like 146.07 and 146.67 so 0 0.07 and 0 0.67 there is a difference of 0 0.60 megahertz in the input and output so they repeaters they been somewhere there in boosting the signals uh, uh, signals that the things can be same at the both the places coming to the next slide that is uh, modes of communication uh, if you talk about the modes of communication uh, there are four ways uh, modes of communication the first is uh, continuous wave uh, that is cw uh, the second one is amplitude modulation that is am the third one is uh, SSB that is single side band. So let's start with the continuous wave that is CW. So a constant a wave sorry a wave of constant amplitude and frequency. It is a wave of constant amplitude and frequency. What is const what is amplitude and what is frequency? I have already discussed in my few videos back. If you want to see these, uh, if you want to know about the amplitude and the frequency, what does it there? So you can watch my few last 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 video that is sound and that is sound and the radio. So we, there I have described about this topic very clearly. So you can get access there. So uh, this a wave of constant amplitude and frequency is there in the continuous wave. Morse code is transmitted by this mean. This means when a carrier wave is switched on or off. This is the unique thing in the continuous wave. Coming to the second mode that is amplitude modulation. Amplitude modulation that is the highest height of the wave that is going there. So in this, uh, as you know, it's it's already it, in its name is there amplitude. The, the varying thing will be like amplitude. You can say the AM works by varying the strength of the transmitted signal in relation to the information being sent. So you are boosting your strength. You are varying the strength of the transmitter. So that that you are increasing the wave. Uh, you can see in the left side there is a diagram of full AM modulation. The second diagram you can see in the y-axis and the x-axis there is a small graph, uh, full amplitude modulation. Uh, the, at the center there is a line and the left and right side there is a curve. So this wave you can see here they have varied the transmitted signal. The wave started with the x-axis and it's uh, like it changed its, uh, its varied its path. So amplitude modulation works by varying the strength of the transmitted signal in relation to the information being sent as per the information they change this signal strength and the power is connected power is concentrated sorry power is concentrated 
on the carrier frequency and two adjacent sidebars you can see there's two adjacent sidebars so the power is con uh, concentrated on the carrier frequency and the two adjacent sidebars uh, coming to the third mode of communication that is single sideband that is ssb so a refined of amplitude modulation that is with the am that we have discussed right now the refinement of the amplitude modulation am that more efficiently uses transmitter power and bandwidth by suppressing the carrier and concentrating power to a single sideband ssb that is single sideband has become the standard for living standard for long distance voice communication so again many time it happens a problem in the long distance communication so generally in that case uh, people use uh, ssb for the long distance communication uh, because the here what happened the, the transmitter power and the bandwidth uh, is suppressed by suppressed by the suppressing the carrier and the concentrating the power of the single sideband so, so sideband power gets changed here you can see the diagram on the left side ssb modulation that is usb and the bottom side you can see the lsb ssb modulation so these are the two waves here you can see uh, so this generally this happens here coming to the applications of the ham radio if we talk about the application of ham radio where the ham radios are actually used in which sectors this ham radio is helpful uh, what are the applications like we are using in this uh, in the time so the first one is that the emergency communication during the disaster as i have already discussed a few minutes back in my this video uh, in war time in emergency time when the like uh, towers and the signal the wires get destroyed all over there and you have to communicate uh, with the people of your team so normal communication like telephone communication and all other things that are not not that are not uh, feasible so in that case you need the ham radio because they work on different frequency so emergency communication during the disaster is one of the application of the ham radio coming to the second point ham radios is uh, in space uh, ham radios in space it is used used by the astronauts astronauts in the space to communicate uh, by to the, the uh, different to the people who were when they went there for the uh, research work so coming to the third application that is the digital application of ham radio so digital application digital application you can here you can use automatic uh, packet uh, reporting system aprs packet radio in packet radio you can use uh, six is ham radio in agriculture agriculture uh, field sector also you can use the ham radio uh, next seventh is d star that is digital smart technologies for amateur radio here also you can use the ham radio coming to the drawbacks if you talk about few drawbacks of the radio like uh, so the first drawback of the radio ham radio is that you here you won't be able to call a, to a specific station unless you have already scheduled a meeting like uh, for everything you need to schedule like uh, a meeting for this for the communication uh, in emergency time what happens people uh, they uh, they plan they schedule the meetings in advance for the if uh, there is some emergency so, so just uh, one uh, meeting they already schedule in advance so the drawback is that you won't be able to get in touch with the stations uh, quickly if you want to come can connect uh, urgently like without any plan so you cannot uh, connect uh, without a uh, prior uh, like appointment instead second uh, drawback is that like uh, it's the radio might not be able to reach all over the world without better antenna see here antenna is everything so without better antenna uh, it's not possible to reach to the every nook and corner of the world so this is one of the second drawback of the radio ham radio 
Uh, here's uh, some list of the amateur radio organizations uh, who are there in the international uh, nat international level and uh, there's also one list uh, of amateur radio who is in, in the national level that is in india based list is there so the start we will start with the international list of the amateur radio organization the first is the amateur radio lighthouse society this is devoted to maritime communications amateur radio uh, lighthouses and lights ship the second one is amateur radio development society uh, to develop a community radio research and uh, in to encourage them to provide aid during the disaster second one the third one is uh, europe radio amateur organization that is eu rio euro the fourth one is the international morse code preservation society next is mhrc mount abu international ham club radio club next is international radio amateur radio club next is international amateur radio union that is i a r u e r u uh, this is a league of the national societies of the amateur radios all over there next is uh, amateur international league of the expert expertist uh, radio amateurs so these are the few list uh, of the international uh, radio organizations uh, there are few more more international uh, radio organization i'm um, um, radio amateur radio organization so i have just listed the few one coming to the national level if you talk about the india's perspective the there is a list of the amateur radio organizations who are working at the india level the first one is amateur radio society of india that is and the in their national association for the indian radio amateur uh, member society of eiaru that i have discussed that is working at the national level a uh, second one is amateur radio development society that a r d s amateur radio development society it, it is used to develop uh, uh, community radio community around the radio research and encourage them to provide aid during the disaster so this is there. the third one is south india amateur radio society association for the south indian radio amateurs uh, s i a r s c c r s is based at uh, chennai that is south indian amateur radio society so from the name it is clear it, it, it will be uh, it will be situated in the south city of the india that is uh, south india so it's based in at chennai next is uh, that uh, jna wireless association one of the oldest amateur radio clubs in mumbai next is indian ham radio ham academy it's one of the oldest amateur radio operators place for educational education research and development so next is west bengal radio club it this is uh, one of the oldest amateur radio club providing service towards society at the time of disaster so at the time of disaster it's, it's working and it's one of the oldest one situated in the west bengal uh, next is mumbai amateur radio society it's a group of ham radio enthusiasts in enthusiasts in mumbai next is national institute of amateur radio uh, it's a government funded organization based in hyderabad india which is uh, set up to promote amateur radio in india next is uh, mount abu international ham radio club mhrc uh, organization is based in mount abu india facility facility facilitates a program of platform for amateur radio practitioner all over the globe next uh, radio this uh, trivandrum uh, amateur radio society tars at stars one of the oldest amateur radio societies in tiruvananthapuram trivandrum uh, next is uh, palakkad palakkad amateur radio technical society its parts short form is parts p a r t s is a non profit organization active in palakkad district of kerala to promote uh, amateur radio so these are the few international level of uh, national level organizations who are working in the field of this amateur radio 
uh, here is a list of amateur radio software tools uh, that you can use you can see like it's uh, C software is uh, CW skimmer license is proprietary operating system is windows uh, category is morse code decoding second is eco link freeware windows ios and so works on android also categories is voip next is irlp license is proprietary and os is linux the category is voip next uh, the software is uh, fidigi that's uh, license is gpl and os uh, is uh, windows mac os linux android freebsd category is sound card defined radio next is gnu radio category is gpl uh, os is uh, windows mac os linux categories is uh, software defined radio and the signal processing and next is wsgt category is gpl operating system windows linux linux like category is weak signal communication next software is wspr license gpl and it works on my windows mac os linux freebsd unix like category is weak signal uh, next software is hamsphere license is proprietary works on the windows mac os linux ios and android apps also uh, category is voip simulation simulation uh, next software is uh, splat and the category is gpl it works on windows mac os linux category is radio uh, propagation modeling uh, if we talk about the operating system uh, the debian project maintains a pure blend that includes ham radio software the ham bsd project is a variation of open bsd so this ham radio is uh, very helpful in emergency like you can say emergency communication it many time during the war during the earthquake during the uh, like uh, tsunami type uh, thing that ha happens or if any new an emergency happens to the country so in that case this ham radio is very helpful and so in to increase the so in so increase in ham radio usage will make our nation development step by step ahead more good so let's hope for that so these are the references that i used so thank you for watching this uh, I, let me show you one more uh, uh, like we have one small video uh, that uh, deals uh, with the this a person of sora sora is uh, there is a society of uh, amateur radio amateurs so there is a person who is sanjay gautam he is a amateur radio operator so i'll show you a small clip of 8 minutes based on his he'll tell you about the amateur radio and about the process and all things so let's see the video of mr sanjay gautam uh, he is a president of sora society of uh, radio amateurs let's have a look आज अपने खास मेहमान सेगमेंट में आपकी मुलाकात कराएंगे संजय गौतम से जो सोरा यानी सोसाइटी ऑफ रेडियो एमेचर्स के सचिव हैं ये एक हैम ऑपरेटर हैं जो दुनिया भर वायरलेस पर दूसरे हैम ऑपरेटर से बातचीत करते हैं बगैर मोबाइल या लैंडलाइन फोन के November Eco India to November Fox Fox your signal strength is 59 plus 59 plus i can hear you loud and clear um the clarity is very good um from my side over to November Fox 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 Ah Raja QSL number Eco India number Fox Fox here uh, please let me know your QTH please दुनिया की बात करें तो दुनिया में ये जब संचार उपकरणों का आविष्कार हुआ था उसके बाद ये चौकिया तौर पर यूएस में आया और वहाँ कोलंबिया यूनिवर्सिटी में 
पहला हैम क्लब बना और भारत की बात करें तो भारत में 1921 में ये शौक की तरह उभरा और 1921 में ही अमरिंदर चंद्र गुप्तु थे उनको पहला लाइसेंस मिला था और कहे तो 1980 तक भारतवर्ष में करीबन 1800 से ऊपर हैम हो गए थे और आज की बात करें तो 20,000 से ऊपर ही लोग लाइसेंस ऑपरेटर हैं दरअसल इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स और रेडियो कम्युनिकेशन में शौक रखने वालों का ये एक हॉबी है जिसे हैम रेडियो या अमेचर रेडियो कहा जाता है हैम ऑपरेटर बनने के पहले आपको भारत सरकार के संचार मंत्रालय द्वारा आयोजित एक परीक्षा पास करनी होती है उसके बाद सरकार द्वारा वायरलेस चलाने का परमिशन दिया जाता है जिनको इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स में और इस आर एफ में रेडियो फ्रीक्वेंसी में शौक है तो ये लाइसेंस आम नागरिकों के लिए ही है तो उनको संचार मंत्रालय द्वारा आयोजित परीक्षा में बैठना होता है और वो परीक्षा संचार मंत्रालय ही उसको ऑर्गेनाइज करता है उसके सेंटर्स हैं स्टेट्स में तो वहाँ जाकर उस परीक्षा को देना होता है और जब आप परीक्षा पास करने के बाद और आपकी वो रिपोर्ट ली जाती है गृह मंत्रालय से और इसके क्लियरेंस के पश्चात आपको वायरलेस प्रोग्रामिंग कोऑर्डिनेशन विंग है संचार मंत्रालय का वो आपको लाइसेंस ग्रांट कर देता है और आप एक लाइसेंस ऑपरेटर हो जाते हैं शौक के अलावा इन हैम ऑपरेटर्स की एक खास पहचान और शख्सियत होती है क्योंकि बाढ़ भूकंप या कोई अन्य त्रासदी के समय जब संचार के सभी माध्यम फेल हो जाते हैं तो यही हैम ऑपरेटर्स अपने वायरलेस सेट से अन्य एजेंसियों तक संपर्क स्थापित करने में कारगर होते हैं जहाँ तक आप उपयोगिता की बात करते हैं तो हैम जाहिर तौर पे एक शौक है इसको आप यूज़ के लिए तो आप नहीं बोल सकते ये शौकिया है हाँ इस्तेमाल की अगर आप बात करते हैं तो आपदाओं में इसका बहुत ज़्यादा उपयोग है आपदाओं में हम रेस्क्यू ऑपरेशन में रहते हैं कम्युनिकेशन एजेंट की तरह काम करते हैं और कम्युनिकेशन विभिन्न एजेंसियों को देते हैं तो कम्युनिकेशन एक बहुत इम्पॉर्टेंट टूल रहता है आपदा के समय और आपदा के समय में समय का भी बड़ा महत्व है अगर सही समय पर आप रेस्क्यू कर लेते हैं या वहाँ सहायता पहुँचा देते हैं तो ये बहुत बड़ी बात है तो आपदाओं के वक्त इसका उपयोग बहुत ज़्यादा बढ़ जाता है उसके बाद जब हम एक दूसरे से बात करते हैं तो इसमें एक प्रतिबंध है कि आप बिजनेस व्यापार की बात नहीं करते तो हम जनरली टॉपिक हमारा टेक्नोलॉजी पे होता है पर्सनल होता है तो उससे क्या होता है कि टेक्नोलॉजी का ट्रांसफ़र भी होता है जैसे हमने कुछ जाना है या कुछ किया है तो हम दूसरे हैम से वो टेक्नोलॉजी को शेयर करते हैं तो ये बहुत बड़ी बात है बिहार में अभी सिर्फ 10 से 12 ऑपरेटर्स हैं जो लगातार संपर्क में रहते हैं लेकिन दक्षिण भारत और तटीय इलाकों में इनकी संख्या हजारों में है जहां यह काफी लोकप्रिय है आई कैन कॉपी यू बी एच आई वेरी वेल हम आपको बहुत अच्छी तरह से रीड कर पा रहे हैं आपका सिग्नल स्ट्रेंथ फाइव नाइन है और बहुत ही क्लियर है आपका क्यू एस ओ ओवर टू बी एच आई और इतना दूरी से इतना अच्छा बात हो रहा है आपका भी सिग्नल स्ट्रेंथ मेरे इंड पे फाइव नाइन फाइव नाइन प्लस होगा काफी क्लियर है कोई दिक्कत नहीं है आपके क्यूएसओ में डू यू कॉपी मी ओवर कॉल करके देखे अगर कोई और भी स्टेशन है तो वो भी क्यूएसओ करेंगे ओवर टू नंबर इको इंडिया एनी स्टेशन अदर स्टेशन ऑन स्टैंड बाई दिक्टर यूनिफॉर्म थ्री नवम्बर इको इंडिया इंडिया, 
and uh, weather is uh, three four Charlie today. Cloudy sky, nice weather, bright sunny day today here. So over to Bravo Hotel India. यहाँ जो हमारा ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है उसको हम सोरा के नाम से जानते हैं सोसाइटी ऑफ रेडियो अमेचर्स तो पटना के या बिहार के आप कह लें सारे लोग इसके मेंबर हैं और इसमें हम बात तो आपस में करते हैं वो तो ठीक ही है लेकिन हम नए युवाओं को प्रशिक्षण देते हैं और उनको हैम की तैयारी करवाते हैं और भी कोई आपदा से रिलेटेड हमारी जो कुछ सर्विसेज हैं हमें बुलाया जाता है तो हम उसके लिए तत्पर रहते हैं अगर आपको शौक है और आप में लगन है तो आप भी एक हैम ऑपरेटर बनकर अपने प्रदेश और समाज के लिए बेहतर काम कर सकते हैं आप नेट पर आएंगे ना बिकॉज बहुत सारे हमारे ऑपरेटर आज शाम में आएंगे तो आप छह बजे इसी वन फोर पर स्टैंड बाई में रहिएगा और हम लोग एक बार क्यूएसओ कर लेंगे ओवर So this was a small video regarding the how the ham radio they talk the about words they that they use. So Mr. Sanjay Gautam is the president of Sora Society of uh, Radio Machos. So I hope you have got a lot of new insights and insights and puts about the what is ham radio, what is amateur radio. Uh, so if you have if you like this video, please like, share, subscribe this video, my channel, subscribe my channel, and you can share also this video if you like this video. And still, if you have any query or questions regarding the amateur radio, the ham radio, please uh, comment below and ask to me. And uh, thank you for watching. This was Rabindu Sharma. Thank you so much.